about each other. And this is exactly what you have, Your Excellency, have been talking about. Government procurement is about how those SMEs are able to supply for the government procurement. And we really congratulate Your Excellency because Kenya has made a role model for the government procurement. 30% of government procurement goes to SMEs, women, youth, and people with disabilities. So we thank you very much, and we hope all the presidents of Africa will take this lead. Source 21 is about us. It's about the continental free trade area, how we double the intra-Africa trade, how we double our COMESA by knowing about each other. As Your Excellency has said, it is very important for the employment, for the job creation, for the entrepreneurs of Africa, and we are really privileged here to have Your Excellency with our business community, and we invite Your Excellency and all Your Excellencies to come and push the button Please. for the Please launch of the Source Comesta 21. Can we have a big applause? Once the, once the button is pressed, please, control room, let's play that video. But once the button is pressed. There we go. Thank you. Please, a warm round of applause, please. And there it is, the Comesa Source 21, a business facilitation handbook. Thank you, Your Excellencies. We now allow the in this auditorium. Welcome, Your Excellencies. Welcome, Your Excellencies. Karibu Nisana. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Welcome, Your Excellency. Your Excellency Honorable Uhuru Kenyatta, President of the Republic of Kenya, Your Excellency, you are very much today's program. Waziri Karibu Sana. Your Excellencies, Ends of State and Government, this red area. And therefore, as government and the citizens of Africa, we are very, very excited. This forum uh, brings in business to showcase uh, commodities in what is, what is dubbed, dubbed Source 21, bringing products from the 21 Comesa countries and also giving the opportunity for uh, this high level business forum. So Your Excellency, without much ado, it is my pleasure to take this opportunity 
to invite the President of the Republic of Kenya, His Excellency, Honorable Uru Kenyatta, to open this forum and launch the high-level business discussion. Your Excellency, can you go and address? Uh, thank you. Your Excellency is Heads of State and Government. Your Excellency, the Secretary General of COMESA, our distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, I am indeed very delighted to join you on this occasion of the opening ceremony of the Source 21, Comesa International Trade Fair, and the High Level Business Summit, whose theme is powering regional integration through trade. To all our visitors across our Comesa region, I say welcome to Nairobi, Karibuni, Kenya. This forum brings together policymakers as well as business leaders from the 21 Comesa member states. And this is an important step in our regional integration journey. Your presence here today signifies your individual and collective commitment to Comesa and your recognition of the critical role intra-regional trade plays as a driver of economic development and progress. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, as Africa embraces the movement towards a borderless territory under the recently launched Africa Continental Free Trade Area, the business communities, both regionally and globally, eagerly await the benefits of trade that will come not only with expanded markets, but with the opportunities for rapid development and access as well to innovation and technology. The desire for economic integration follows from the ambitious and political vision of African leaders as stipulated in the 1980 Lagos Action Plan, the Abuja Treaty of 1991, and the African Union Agenda 2063, which is Africa's blueprint and master plan for transforming our continent into a global powerhouse of the future. In terms of a uh, consumer base, the commercial market accounts for 520 million people, while the tripartite free trade area and the Africa continental free trade area account for 630 million and 1.2 billion people, respectively. However, despite the size of population, the continent has only exploited less than 16% of intra-Africa trade's potential. Truth be told, that the situation is not better in Comesa. The share of intra-Comesa trade in goods of its total trade currently stands at just 7%. It is also unfortunate that most common products traded within our markets are still raw minerals and traditional commodities with little or no value addition that is undertaken in Africa, notwithstanding the fact that Africa has the largest number of young consumers in the world. This is the situation that the Africa Free Trade Area attempts to remedy by facilitating higher product diversification and higher levels of progress. Our continent is full of resources, products, markets, 
and services that can propel interstate business to rival established configurations in Europe, America, as well as Asia. As we work towards seamless regional and continental integration, we must remember that we not only seek a better business environment for our large enterprises who are represented here, but also expansion of our small and medium businesses, as well as employment creation for our young people. Africa is a young continent with about 60% of our population under 25. All our efforts to increase intra-Africa trade must also therefore seek to generate decent and well-paying jobs for the millions of educated, talented, and energetic young people in our continent. And today, I encourage you all to spend considerable time during this forum on how we can actualize this important goal. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, this high-level business summit provides a platform for public-private engagement on some of the constraints that businesses face when trading across our commercial region. Political leaders and policymakers will have the direct opportunity to interface with business leaders and captains of industry so as to develop solutions that will help overcome these challenges. It is indeed my hope that we will come up with innovative and practical strategies to promote industrialization and enhance trade in our region. This summit, too, is being attended by some of our parliamentarians, who I believe will keenly be following the discussions and whom we also believe will provide the support required when translating these proposals into national and regional legislation. I am also delighted that this forum will launch the Source 21 Commerce Handbook, which is a business fa facilitation tool that aims to inform businesses, traders, SMEs, investors, and others on the various market opportunities across the Commerce country. This forum will also introduce the 50 million women speak project that aims to empower women entrepreneurs across Africa by providing financial and non-financial information to help them grow their businesses. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, today as a country, Kenya has achieved tremendous progress in reducing the cost of doing business and improving the overall investment environment. In particular, we have maintained a stable macroeconomic environment by promoting appropriate regulatory policies that not only support business, but also attract higher volumes of foreign direct investment. Kenya, as one of the larger economies in Comesa, and among the leading importers and exporters, particularly for agricultural products, who also are amongst the world's leading exporters of tea, but also among the top three commercial exporters of horticulture and floriculture. And in addition, our own manufacturing sector, being one of the strongest in the region, with links to both East, Southern, and Northern Africa. I would therefore wish to take this opportunity to encourage more companies to invest in Kenya's wide range of lucrative investment opportunities that exist across various sectors, including infrastructure development, agribusiness, manufacturing, and financial services. And I also assure investors that Kenya continues to pursue a free enterprise economy and aims at building the strongest industrial base in our sub-region. And I do believe that with a sound economic base as well as a well-trained workforce, we can become a destination for this that is ripe for foreign investment. 
Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I would wish in conclusion to draw all your attention to the fact that one of COMESA's key objectives is to promote joint development in all fields of economic activity and the joint adoption of macroeconomic policies and programs to raise the standard of living of all its people and to foster closer working relations among all its members. This is not an easy objective to attain, but I do hope our deliberations in the next few days will focus on how we can spur the rapid growth of our economies through trade and improve the lives of ordinary citizens. Therefore, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, with these very few and brief remarks, indeed it is my singular honor to declare the Source 21 Commercial International Trade Fair and High Level Business Summit officially open and I wish you all good deliberations, successful outcomes, and I thank you for your attention, and may God bless you all. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Your Excellency, for your wonderful opening remarks. At this juncture now, I want to round table, and therefore, uh, humbly invite attendees who are to participate also to do the same so that we can be able to have a discussion lenses. At the business round table they will be joined by the Secretary General of COMESA and the Chairman of our business forums who are part of the discussion. I also want now to invite Mr. John Gidirangu of BBC to moderate the discussion in the round table. Bwana Dirangu. Um, Your Excellencies, distinguished guests, my name is uh, George Nirango, or let me say Dirago, just in case my president tells me I went to the BBC and I think I'm in London. Um, the reason why it is important, because I'm, I'm originally Kenyan, is because we have a lot of representation in the room. We could just have that by show of hands. How You're there. Anyone from West? Representation? Let's still, all right. Now we have a lot of representation from different parts of uh, the continent, which is crucial for the conversation that we're having within. Um, we could go up back and forth about how we've noted the macro issues. Um, I know Mkisekitu, we've spoken before, and some, we have the TFTA um, that was set up as well. We saw the deal signed in Egypt, and then a little later, we saw the states uh, about two years later. We finally saw it being signed in Niamey, in Niger. And we've, we are now hopeful that it will create what we've termed as the biggest business block. And it translates to the SMEs that are most of the time left out of conversations such as this and of the bigger revenue picture. So we'll start off with His Excellency President uh, Uhuru Kenyatta. It's opportunities and challenges. One of the challenges was every country needs to feel like they're getting something out of it. And one of the issues was visibility. So we'd like to hear from you the aspect of market share as every country tries to build its industries in their own. Thank you. I think as I have just said in my statement, there is very little trade that we do with each other in comparison to what we do with the rest of the world. And what we're really trying to encourage through the CFTA is for us to look at each other's respective strengths and weaknesses. Where our country is strong, how can we work together 
to bolster those industries in those countries by creating markets in our own. If we take agriculture, for example, uh, the way the things are going today, there is no doubt that Uganda, for example, will be a major supplier of uh, agricultural commodities. How can we work together to value add and to open up our markets to them? Whereas in turn, we in Kenya are also focusing on other industries where Uganda provides uh, you know, a perfect market. If we're talking about now trying to move through to um, the ICT world, uh, products that can be made in Kenya that can have access to, to, to uh, Ugandan markets, and therefore creating a win-win situation because every country has its respective strengths. How do we come together as Comesa, as Africa, to take advantage of the strengths that we each have and open markets in the rest of the continent for those products? Therefore, and thereby increasing employment, not just in Uganda, but also in Kenya, as an example. So, so, so to me, it's how we share by taking advantage of our respective strengths and our God-given uh, uh, mineral resource, because uh, what we're doing right now is exporting those resources to Asia, to Europe, to America, and then re-importing those products into our markets thereby denying our young people jobs. We want to create opportunities for our young people by creating those jobs here, by manufacturing here, first and foremost taking advantage of our own markets and ultimately international markets, and we cannot do that without the science. Perfect. You mentioned Uganda. Thank you very much for that. Um, the, the subject of the conference was what are the... Uh, Stimulants, stimuli that can make the can up make Africa prosperous. Really, that's the the topic. The, the what I've been watching since the 1960s, because you know I've been here for some time. <laughs> <laughs> is that the mistake is that uh, that is made? is that you take a unidimensional approach. The World Bank, the universities, at different times, emphasize one point, education. If we get education, everything will be all right. So they educate people, but the people they educate have no job because they didn't deal with, some, with, some, with other things. Now, if you only talk about trade facilitation, I, want to do, I don't want to fall in that trap, because uh, what uh, Africa has got, uh, uh, after watching it for a long time, because actually it was a, a dilemma, why Africa is so rich and yet so poor. So after careful study for a long time, we came to the conclusion that, the, that there were a number of bottlenecks. It was not one bottleneck that we had to deal with. We had about 10 of them, and we identified them. Uh, one of them we are talking about now is one of them, market integration. Uh, if you produce, where do you sell? Is the market of Uganda of 41 million people enough to support large-scale pr production? No, it is not. So this uh, fragmented market must be integrated. That one is for sure. Now I think people are, are now getting agreed on that. Uh, recently I was in China to talk to the ministers of Africa who were there. And I told them, I said, uh, how can we be so short-sighted? China has got an internal market of 1.3 billion people. 
yet they are fighting for other markets. They are fighting with America for additional markets. Somebody with 1.3 billion internal market guaranteed, that market is not enough. He's looking for more market, more market, more market. And here we are very satisfied with 41 million people <laughs> of Uganda. This is really uh, very serious. So, market, fragmented market was one of the bottlenecks which we are handling. But how about what His Excellency was talking about? The costs of doing business. Even if the market is integrated, if you don't solve the problems of the cost pushers, things which make the production uh, costly, are you going to be competitive in that market? Or, or are you going to integrate it for others? So that's why you must identify those cost pushers and deal with them. That, that is, uh, uh, for instance, uh, transport, infrastructure, transport, electricity, the cost of money, all these are, are cost pushers, which will make it impossible for our business people to be competitive. And then the little issue they were talking about in the 1960s, then also comes in the human resource development, education for health. Of course, if you don't have an educated population, that is also another problem. But that one, fortunately, many African countries are, have addressed. Uh, now the question is what sort of education? Not just the literacy anymore, it is the literacy plus skills and uh, uh, the, the, the fourth industrial revolution that we are talking about now, the inter artificial intelligence, and so on. So the bottlenecks, how about the politics? How about the politics? If you, you push politics of identity, and you therefore cause sectarianism in the society, and conflict, how would the trade uh, take place? So, these uh, strategic bottlenecks, uh, there are 10 of them. The, I have written about them, the, the, the documents are available. The other time when we were here for TCAD, the, I could see the Japanese were wondering, these Africans, they are so rich, but yet they are so poor. <laughs> but, but, but they don't know how, to, they, they are polite, they don't want to tell you, but you can see a question in their head. I think they were coming to the conclusion that there must be something genetically wrong with these Africans. <laughs> How can you be poor in such a rich continent? You, there must be something wrong with you. So when I detected the, the, the one in the Japanese head, I, I said to help them, because I've been watching for a long time, I said the Japanese don't worry. These Africans are not genetically incapable, but they have been having these bottlenecks if they solve them, they will move. So I will give you a couple of those bottlenecks. <laughs> All right, thank you. Thank you for that and for context. Um, Dr. Kitui, it's hard to talk that, uh, but let's talk about his... We've already started dealing with the issues of how do we measure local content as a condition for market access. And the Africa continental free trade area is going, will invest in producing that content in Africa. But it has been the political will and the technical capacity to enforce clear rules of origin. Deal with that. Thank you very much. I think uh, most African countries in the uh, AFCTA have got a huge share of Asian needs. And I think uh, they stand to benefit from this uh, common free trade area. But there is a condition. The condition is that each government should have the political will to support the Asian needs. Because the SMEs left alone will not be able to penetrate the market, no matter how you make it even for them. Because uh, there's competition. Now competition simply means that uh, it will be free for all. So we as states, individual states, should have a deliberate policy to support, promote, and incentivize these SMEs so that they are able to partake of this huge market. Otherwise, it will be a big market, free for all, but for the big boys. It means that uh, politically, 
obviously our existence will be threatened. <laughs> so, so it's very, very important that we, we all take stock, we have a balance, we coordinate, and we have dialogue, interstate dialogue, like President Uhuru Kenyatta said, in the region of East Africa. Obviously, we take Kenya, Tanzania, Uganda, Rwanda, and the Burundi, we put them together and see how do we help these SMEs integral as a region, and then how do they fit in the bigger picture of commerce, the bigger picture of uh, the AFCTA. Otherwise, the intended objective is exactly uh, what uh, is going to be achieved. But if we don't do that, no matter how we talk about service and all these things, it will be in vain. So big contracts should be structured in such a manner that SMEs are given space to grow. And for them to grow, obviously, they have to be quality, and they have to have uh, the desired product at the end. So it's for us as government to support them. If we don't, this whole thing will become again another open door for the rest of the world to come and fish on Africa. That's how we see it. And I think he, political will has been demonstrated. People have signed the documents. And this has been a long journey. Pan-Africanism started a long time ago. But we are now culminating into realizing the forum, which will give us a chance to grow our own economy as Africans and trade within Africa. But as long as we don't do the local thing in Kenya, the local thing in East Africa, the local thing in Zambia, and we start it, this will be another exercise in futility. Yeah. Thank you very much. Maybe I could track back to the question on uh, digitalization and plugging. The number of laws intended to regulate and see to it that uh, there's fairness in the business. But again, we have to test these laws. And we test them as we go into this free trade area. But the most important thing is uh, to dialogue with these entities which are coming into the country to ensure that uh, when you see uh, leakages and hemorrhage, you tell them midstream, say, look, you can't continue getting this huge chunk of our resource without paying back. I, I think uh, Zambia has uh, stood firm. We have said we can uh, review our policies midway. We sit and dialogue with other investors and we negotiate a change midstream. And people have said inconsistency. They've said policy inconsistency. It's not policy inconsistency. If you're leading, leading an army of men for battle and you see them perishing at every corner, so pull back and begin saying, look, what have we done wrong? So Africans should not be misled by those who are investing by saying, no, we're not coming home to invest in your country because we're inconsistent when we can see leakages and bleeding of the economy. No, you have to stop the boat midstream and say, look, we can't go on like this, guys. We need to take stock of uh, what we're getting out and what we're leaving behind. And I think on that score, I'd urge all of us in Africa to stand firm and support each other. When I'm ailing in Zambia, it doesn't mean that Tanzania will not be affected. Let's be our brother's keepers. And I think that's the way to proceed. All right. Before we move on to you, Your Excellency, please allow me to come back to uh, President Kenyatta, because you launched the Digital Economy Blueprint. And I remember you mentioning the trust, integrity, and curbing malpractice across different economic sectors, uh, tax practice, n you name it, was one of the reasons why you decided to digitize and go particularly that way. But w we'd like to know, so we're handling it from a national level, but we need a lot of... We had our digital blueprint, which we released. And if you recall the statement that I said, is that our hope was that it would also prove as to be uh, um, a case study for other countries to see what they can build on, add, or help even improve our own document. Because at the end of the day, when we digitize, we improve transparency, we improve accountability, and we open up our system. But if we want to integrate the continent, we have to be at the same level also with regard to our digitization so that the processes that we're using in Kenya have interconnectivity with the processes that are being used in Uganda, in Zambia, in Mauritius, and elsewhere. And this helps then not only reduce costs of doing business, but creates that much more transparency, even as we are discussing, for example, rules of origin. You are able, through that platform, to be able to access data and information on different products that are made, that are available on the continent. We are able to even transact on the digital platform. 
right? And there is no reason why, for example, a Kenyan supermarket cannot buy um, directly products from a Zambian farm. So integrating our digital platform is going to be a critical element, not only to create transparency and openness and accountability, but also to help, as President Lungu has said here, to also help our SMEs establish market share in other distant countries because on the digital platform you're able to see I'm looking for pencils or I'm looking for shoes or I'm looking you're able to see what is available across the African continent using that platform not only pay for it but also have it shipped to you wherever you are on the continent so the more we integrate the more we learn from each other at current, we are all at different levels of, of um, digitizing our systems and our economies. But we need to continue working together, enhancing and building on each other's experiences until we ultimately have a connected Africa. And that connected Africa will not only reduce cost of doing business, but will also create that much more harmony so that our traders, especially uh, small and medium-sized enterprises will be able to have access to the 1.3 billion people that President Museveni was referring to. Perfect. You've alluded to the SMEs more than once, which brings us now to you, um, Your Excellency. Um, so, uh, to help uh, SMEs integrate and benefit from regional and continental integration, we, we must uh, promote uh, policies and measures that will improve the business climate, uh, for example, eliminate barriers to SMEs in obtaining licenses and business permits to set up their businesses. The ease of doing business of the World Bank is a good indicator uh, on how well countries are doing and Mauritius is doing fairly well. Uh, we have to facilitate access to finance and in Mauritius, the government actively participates in setting up funds for the SMEs through the government bank, uh, Moor Bank, and to some extent also through the State Bank of Mauritius. And currently, there is a national payment system which has been introduced, which is being introduced to enable uh, SMEs to have immediate access to cash for their transactions. And we have also introduced a regulatory sandbox license whereby um, several digital lending platforms have been launched, such as crowdfund, crowd uh, uh, funding. Um, also, we need to have flexible measures in taxation. But most importantly, we have to enable, uh, to have flexible rules of origin that can enable SMEs, for example, to import parts from across the world and make value additions. Produce in, uh, in, in Africa, uh, African products. But the question is uh, directed to Mauritius. And uh, in Mauritius, we, all these facilities that uh, we're giving uh, provides a level playing field between the large corporates and the SMEs who can integrate the larger economy. Another practice uh, which is uh, emerging is for government allocates a percentage of public procurement, that was in your question, uh, to SMEs. Um, uh, so the, the SMEs have um, a share in contracts that are allocated by government. So these will help them to significantly uh, promote their trade. Thank you. Thank you. Of course, when you hear that, I'm sure you have a lot to the region for uh, international support. So it's not easy in the practice in, 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 uh, uh, to, to solve where do we start to give preferences and where do, where do we end up. But as I have the floor, uh, as chairman of the uh, Commissioner Business Council, let me take the opportunity of thanking 
the head of state and government for this high level politi political dialogue. It's very important for the business community to meet you, to inter to interface, to, to, to have a dialogue with you. And uh, and thank also the Commissioner Secretary General for arranging this uh, opportunity to happen. It's a big event. It's uh, the first time maybe in the region we are having that policy dialogue. I wish that in the future we have more policy dialogues like this. And I'm sure at uh, national level there is this dialogue between government and private sector. One of the strengths of Mauritius is that we have, we do have meetings chaired by the prime ministry with the different ministries, with the different uh, private sector organizations and representatives of the business community. And this is where we can, you know, make progress, where we all the problems are solved and this helps the country to grow. And this is where on the, on the count of the president has mentioned it, on ease of doing business, on ease of the, uh, uh, the, the governance issue. Mauritius is making a lot of progress. I know Kenya also is making a lot of progress. And the issue of connectivity, uh, which is a big problem for the business community. I'm thankful again to President Kenyatta, who mentioned during his state visit in Mauritius, that on this issue of connectivity, he is personally uh, 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 make an engagement that uh, we, uh, we will have a shipping line between the port of Mauritius and the port of Mombasa, which will open the, 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 the gateway, not only for Mauritius, but for the whole Indian Ocean Islands to the regions and to the African region, which will help the Indian Ocean Islands to increase their the trade within the region. Perfect, thanks. Uh, let's, let's hear a uh, commercial perspective. We've said, as we establish new industries, um, the value chain seems to see a lot more informal sector speaker. A few months, very clear signal from the political level at continental level that Africa is ready to work together and integrate, to look inward. And I think now the challenge for us is how do we make sure that we unpack that to ensure that all levels of economic activity are carried along. This is why I'm particularly happy that this dialogue is happening today. And I really want to thank the excellencies for finding their personal time to sit here and signal the commitment by countries to move forward and have Africa trade amongst itself. Also just to point out that on the issue of the integration, as a regional community, we have to point out that we are the building blocks of this integration. And I think this has also been uh, shown by the movement to go to the tripartite, for example, um, um, framework, free trade area amongst 27 countries within Africa. A lot of work has been done. The, the, the rules of origin that we're talking about, because at the end of the day, it will be how do we trade with each other? Are the rules there? Have we agreed on the rules of origin? What are the tariffs? Can I move my, my goods? Do we have harmonized regulations? Those are the issues that we we'll ultimately have to have to address. And I think that um, the progression from, from Rex to tripartite to continental is the way to go. Now I digress from your question. <laughs> Of, of the informal sector, and, and it's, it's quite a large um, challenge in most of our, our, our countries because they're not even documented. It's, it's actually quite difficult. One of the things we've discovered is that the cross-border trade has a high value of informal trade content. So we started with some programs um, along cross-borders. We've simplified the trade regimes, so the, the process of, of, of crossing your goods below a, a certain threshold, for example, it's $2,000. You have a much more simplified process to cross and process your goods. And therefore, then also, we are also having information desks to, to, to engage the informal sector and allow them to, to be part, to be, to be uh, first of all, documented, categorized, and be part of the recordings and, 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 and the data that we have so that we can have solutions which are tailored to, to, to them in particular. Uh, a, a certain aspect is that we're doing is desegregated, gender desegregated data. And we found that actually 70% of that trade is carried out by women, which for us we, is also an interesting point in which we, how do we support them? How do we have the infrastructure that can help them? With the simple issues like border 
border facilities do they do they cater for for women with children who are crossing for us those are important issues and um so we will continue to 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 intervene through the, our member states to give them the support the technical backup trade specialists so that we can try and 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 bring the the, the informal but digitalization is, is is a very big step which will help us to to, to start to get a better feel of what kind of trade we're doing. Um, the, there's the three elements of, of digitalization as we see it. There's the e-commerce, which is trading platforms, mm -hmm. and there's also, of course, e-logistics. Can we use uh, soft copy rules of origin certificates? Can we use uh, contracts which are in soft copy? But legislation has to come which has to support that. Right. So we have to look at e-legislation. All of this we're looking from the regional perspective, because we have the the privilege of being able to convene our members and to sit around and say, how do we move in tandem? And I think that's where our role even becomes more critical as we try and move forward in our integration agenda. Perfect, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, there's, there's a crucial point that has been mentioned up over time that whatever is written uh, might change. Uh, trademark, for example, among some of the borders within East Africa, they otherwise. So what they would do is that at the border post, in some border posts, they allocated um, and often came back. See, that has not been spoken about in the white papers when we're talking about the AFCFTA, but we have to really be keen about some of these emerging issues. So that's a call. Foundation of over 2,000 citizens across the continent confirmed that an impressive 77 percent and still have space to spare. But in economic terms, individual countries are still very small. Take Rwanda for an even investment. Collectively, the story is very different. The African continent, all 54 economies together. Come for your final remarks uh, after we, we just uh, get some word from uh, uh, some of our key, um, for example, right? We could, we could say that word particularly to reduce some cost. Where are we with that? We are um, happy to learn that, for example, the NSSF Uganda, uh, of its three billion in assets, one billion is invested in Kenya. Uh, strongly with the priorities that our government has, uh, at, we have been working with COMESA for over 20 years. We've been focused on promoting closer economic integration among the member states, and we are working together to increase food safety, plant and animal health, improve access to quality seed, and create stronger market linkages under the COMESA Business Council. Today, this region is more integrated than ever. But while we celebrate this progress, we also recognize that we have much more work ahead to accomplish our shared goal, uh, goal of a common market in this region. Intra-regional trade in Africa is the lowest of the regions in the world, and I have heard several of your excellencies note that. On a macro scale, this undermines businesses and national economies. On a micro scale, this can impact the health and well-being of citizens. While Africa has tremendous capacity to feed itself, sometimes trade barriers prevent this from happening with the speed and scale that we need to solve problems. This continent is young and it's getting younger, as His Excellency President Kenyatta noted. 60% of Africans are under 25, and a decade from now, there will be about 320 million Africans between the ages of 15 and 24. By some estimates, Africa will need 18 million jobs a year, per year, for the next 20 years, just to keep up with the increase of young people entering the job market. We know that trade is a sure way to grow economies and opportunities, and that is wonderful. At the same time, Trade in and of itself does not necessarily mean that opportunities are distributed equally. So as we focus on trade and regional integration and ensuring that the benefits of trade increase, let us also take steps to ensure that new opportunities are shared across populations, especially with an eye on youth and women. I would like to briefly note a few of the initiatives that our government is working on uh, to support trade and economic prosperity. First of all, Prosper Africa. This is an, a new initiative of the United States government announced just a few weeks ago in Mozambique. This is our new initiative to unlock opportunities to do business in Africa
that benefit companies, investors, and workers in both Africa and the United States. Prosper Africa is an opportunity to significantly increase two-way trade and investment in the years ahead. Through Prosper Africa, we will foster stronger linkages between the United States and Africa private sectors and continue to be a reliable partner that will work with you on an equal, fair, and transparent terms so that we can mutually benefit from the opportunities in both Africa and the United States. A second important United States initiative is Feed the Future, guided by the U.S. Global Food Security Strategy. This spurs transformational agricultural production and trade throughout the continent. Through this initiative, we are facilitating the movement of food across borders while helping farmers expand their businesses. Third, we are seeking to expand our engagement with the African Union. We expect this increased partnership will enhance trade facilitation under the African Continental Free Trade Agreement. Recent entry into force of this agreement is an exciting development that carries much promise for increased trade and prosperity in Africa. Lastly, AGOA, the African Growth and Opportunity Act, has facilitated the export of billions of dollars of African goods to the United States. Unfortunately, the opportunities that AGOA offers are significantly underutilized. There's much room to increase African exports to the United States under AGOA. And by more fully taking advantage of the uh, opportunities AGOA affords, COMESA member countries can also further regional integration. The U.S. government will continue to support African businesses at all levels so they can become fully ready to benefit from AGOA. What excites us most about all these initiatives and forums such as today's is the significance they have for capitalizing on the economic potential of Africa. We at the United States Agency for International Development are hopeful and optimistic about Africa's future and our future partnerships. On behalf of USAID and the U.S. government, I wish you a successful trade fair and summit, and thank you very much for this opportunity to address your excellencies. Thank you. Thank you very much. Sir, um, I will put the accent on uh, the positive, sir and what has been done recently uh, to overcome some of these, uh, some of these challenges. Uh, and two uh, measures probably should be uh, mentioned firstly. One is the COMESA Regional Industrialization Implementation Strategy and also the Regional uh, uh, Local Sourcing Policy. Uh, we see these two initiatives uh, as a solid basis to increase uh, the trade in uh, uh, added value products uh, in the region uh, and we are extremely supportive of these uh, um, steps taken by, by COMESA. As you know, the European Union remains uh, a committed partner, partner of COMESA, of all its member states. Uh, we really uh, support the quest for deepening regional integration uh, in the area, and we, we strongly believe, uh, uh, based uh, also uh, on our history and our, and our uh, experience, uh, that this will contribute uh, uh, to create larger markets to attract investments and facilitate trade flows uh, um, and uh, looking at the consumer uh, side of the equation also reduce production costs and prices for, for consumers. Uh, as a show of commitment of this cooperation, uh, the EU and COMESA have over the last few months uh, uh, signed two important re regional programs. Uh, one is the COMESA uh, trade facilitation program for, more, for almost uh, uh, 48 million uh, euros uh, and the Comisa cross-border trade programs uh, um, uh, for a value of around uh, 14 million euros uh, and both these type of initiatives uh, uh, aim at facilitating trade uh, um, movements uh, and flows uh, in, uh, in the region. Um, the continental free trade area has been mentioned. Uh, of course, this is a, a pivotal moment uh, in uh, terms of integration uh, uh, across uh, Africa as a whole uh, and at regional level. Uh, the European Union uh, has always been extremely supportive of these, uh, of these steps taken uh, in terms of continental integration. We are uh, the first uh, 
um, supporter in financial terms of the uh, negotiation process uh, of the uh, continental free trade area. And uh, we look, we keep looking, of course, uh, uh, with interest uh, at parallel uh, initiatives like the tripartite uh, free trade area, uh, which uh, um, has been negotiated and for which we, we hope uh, um, to see conclusion in the negotiations uh, very, very soon. Um, this event uh, uh, is really timely. It comes at a time of uh, huge momentum for uh, integration in Africa at regional level, at uh, uh, continental level. Uh, what this type of event should, should offer, uh, in addition, uh, is to provide uh, the actual opportunity for business uh, uh, people to translate uh, this political will, uh, these important steps, uh, into concrete uh, well, business deals. Uh, in building uh, uh, business networks, uh, in building uh, uh, business opportunities, uh, and, uh, uh, and make the most of, uh, of, uh, of this uh, uh, important initiative. Um, uh, let me, let me uh, conclude by mentioning an important uh, um, uh, European initiative, and I will explain why. Um, as you may know, uh, the European Union has launched the European Investment Plan, uh, which is a new financial instrument uh, uh, designed to increase sustainable investment uh, and job creation um, in Africa. Uh, we hope uh, through the European Investment Plan, the External Investment Plan, uh, to uh, uh, contribute to, to improving the business environment uh, in, uh, uh, in uh, different member states in Africa. Um, and uh, we expect that this initiative will mobilize dozens of billions of, uh, uh, of euros uh, um, to be invested uh, in, in Africa. Our, our <coughs> invitation is, is therefore to the business community uh, to be informed about this and to make the most uh, of, uh, of right. this. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes. yes. His Excellency has allowed me to come in up. This business of making a distinction between SMEs and other businesses. And uh, that man, whoever he is, pointed out what Africa lacks is business. Now, don't start wasting time with the SMEs and the other, the, uh, these economists, Tutui, <laughs> used to be an economist. I'm sure he still is. <laughs> they have got a, a, a measurement, like, you, like we measure our weight by pounds and kilos, we measure economies by GDP. Now, GDP means uh, investments in our country, whether by our citizens, whether by foreigners, or whether by small or big. So what we need to do is to expand these GDPs. That should be the main effort before you go into the subcategorization and uh, sub-discrimination. Now, secondly, our sister, uh, the, who is the, our com com commander for the, for, the, for the trade, what you need to know is that Africa is a continent of under-production. If for, if Uganda is one of the biggest producers of bananas in the whole world. But we are producing about 10 million tons. But still, we are underproducing. Because those Ugandans of, of yours are producing five and a half uh, tons per hectare. In the research institutions, some of our people have gone to uh, 50, uh, 53 tons per hectare of bananas. But the villagers at 5.3 tons. Uh, now I hear that in Brazil, production can go up to 80 uh, tons per hectare. But the Ugandans at, at, at 5.3. Our, our research center has gone up to 53. So this is one issue you need to know, that Africa is a continent of underproduction. They are underproducing here, underproducing there, underproducing here, which must be cured. 
Secondly, so uh, 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 within that, uh, Africa is a continent of underconsumption. The reason is that I, I, I'm going around the villages, that's why I'm, I'm rushing back. I was telling them that uh, you people, there is this Mr. So and so and his wife. Sometimes the wife, wives are many. <laughs> but, but even if it is only one, uh, the, this couple have 10 children. So I was telling them that if you have 10 children, you should be having 40 bed sheets because each child needs four bed sheets. Two on the bed, two which have been washed and uh, to replace this one. So how many bed sheets do you have now? Some of the families, one bed sheet. <laughs> so you, you can, uh, these people are dealing with the trade. You can uh, catalog the underconsumption. In, in terms of meters of textile, in terms of steel, which is used in the houses. In for instance, me, I am a milkman. I am a man of milk. So I know the underconsumption in milk. Uh, in 1986, Ugandans were drinking only 18 liters per person per year. <laughs> now, they have improved a bit they are drinking 60 liters per person per year. But WHO says you must drink 210 liters <laughs> of milk per person per year for you to keep your teeth in your mouth <laughs> and, and make sure that, that, that the bones don't break. So when you, are, you people are dealing with this sector of trade, you need to bring these facts out the underconsumption, the underproduction. Uh, then what uh, 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 our friend from the US said, she told you, and uh, I had not conspired with her, but somehow we, we converged in terms of uh, giving some information. Agoa has been there. You know the Americans gave us 6,500 products which could enter the American market tax-free, quarter-free. But the, she told you we are failing to meet the, the targets because we have the other bottlenecks. You remember the bottlenecks I said? The bottlenecks I said have not allowed Africa to take advantage of, of that very, very generous. Uh, I think this is the greatest thing the United States, the West, did for Africa in the last 500 years. <laughs> Go, but we were not able to take advantage, it, uh, advantage of it fully because of the bottlenecks. So I thank you very much. His Excellency has, has allowed me to go and, and deal with your villagers there in the, who have got only one sheet, one bed sheet. For. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I mean, thank you very much, Your Excellency, Uganda's President Yoweri Museveni. Uh, President Kenyatta, it's tough to talk that.